Hi guys, so in Drawn From Artists today we are looking at the work of John Virtue and his London paintings. Now these paintings are pretty big, so the kind of mark making and response to them we're going to do today isn't true to scale, so it's not quite as gestural as the artist. We're going to be doing it with small materials on a small scale, but getting the feel of some of this kind of layering. As ever, we need to start with a drawing. So I'm going to draw to scale. I'm going to take some measurements off the um, image that I'm working from. This helps you get the proportions a little bit more accurate if you're not so sure. So I've drawn roughly where the activity is, about that point. There's a line that comes across here, goes slightly up. This is the River Thames, because there's a skyline and we can see something that resembles St Paul's Cathedral in the background. Now you might hear some strange noises in the background here. They are chopping some trees down where I live. And there is this great big device outside that's chopping down the trunks. Um, turning them into chippings. So that first one maybe goes a bit more this way. It's kind of shadowy bits coming off it. So what I'm doing is I'm roughly sketching in, there's a big diagonal section here, roughly sketching in sort of some of the sections. Now that looks like a bridge coming across the Thames. Now the more you look at this, the more, the more you'll think, ah, I wonder if that's this, I wonder if that's something else. So at the point where St Paul's Cathedral is, I'm going to just draw a block. See how it's kind of like a step with a dome on the top. There's another kind of step. So I'm breaking these down into stages. Another bit, and that's maybe like a little dome, and there's a teeny cross on top of it. Now, in a real horizon, we know it's kind of quite angular. So I'm going to just put some structure into it. Now, in London, you might want to actually look at the London horizon. There's things like the Shard, the Gherkin. There's some really cool buildings that you might want to incorporate into it. You might want to draw some structure into here. Now, you can't see any detail really into this. So I've created a bit of a base. And now what I'm going to do is work with a felt tip. Now, you want a water-based felt tip. You do not want to work with anything that says permanent on it like a Sharpie because we're going to wet this and we're going to create a kind of atmospheric piece of work as we go on. So I'm going to do some solid fill sections to begin with, carefully working into the drawing. Now, if it's really fiddly little bit of drawing, like the cross on the top of St Paul's Cathedral, I'm not going to draw that in at this stage. Now, you might say, but the horizon is kind of a bit blurred. It doesn't look quite like this. Don't worry too much about that. This is just going to give us some structure to what we do later on. This whole section is very dark, but you can spy some lighter bits into it. So I'm going to kind of suggest structure by working vertically and horizontally. We think most buildings have vertical and horizontal elements to them, not all. Now, whilst I was doing solid fill on the dome, i kind of gone a bit more patchy on there. I've gone over the, the edge a little bit here, but I don't mind too much. This is where the bridge runs across there. And it's just like when you wake up in the night and you think, what is that shape? I'm not quite sure what that is in the dark. And then you think about it and put the light on and think, ah, it's such and such. Now, with this, you're kind of suggesting what you're seeing in the darkness. You're not necessarily telling us exactly what's there. The old show and tell when you're writing a story. Now my pen is running out, but I don't think that's a problem. I think actually that might work quite in my favour because I'm getting a different type of mark from my pen that's just going lighter. Now if you... If you want variety of marks, you might become familiar with working with different materials and different pens. So you could try different things into it. But I'm sticking with the black and white theme. Now, I have on my desk a little water pot, which is a little lid of something. And I've got a paintbrush, quite a soft paintbrush, quite a nice paintbrush. And what I'm going to do, because it is a water-based pen, I'm going to get the water and paint in a controlled way onto the buildings, to the horizon. So if you see what's beginning to happen, you see there's this kind of flow going on here. Now, if you look at the horizon, remember it's kind of got different qualities about it. I'm going to just splash some water around a little bit. But 
Now I've got some paint on my brush, or as it is like an ink that we've generated from the felt tip. Move my water pot out of the way. I'm going to flick this. You see how I'm getting like flicked marks into the horizon. Let's come in a bit closer. So you can see what's happening. Now it's hard to control, but the more you do it, the more controlled you'll become. Now, this isn't necessarily the best brush for this because it's quite a soft brush. If you think about hard brush like a toothbrush or a hog hair style brush, sometimes you get cheap brushes that are quite wiry in paint sets that are actually quite good for this job. You might use them with PVA glue, but you can see this kind of atmospheric kind of mark making that's coming into here like a spray, like a haze. So you could do more of that. Let me zoom back out and show you some more things we're going to try. Now, some people like to lose the white of the paper completely. So you see with a little bit of water on the brush and not a lot else, just a bit contaminated with the colour. See how that wet pull just dragged it and it ran across there. That was really cool. Um, just exploring options. Now you might say, but I really like something and you've just gone over it. Well, don't worry about that. We can come back to those things afterwards. So in places it's become light where we had it dark previously. I'm going to put a little bit of light back into that dome. Now, if you have too much dark in an area and you want to lift it off, what you can do is you can get a piece of tissue and dab onto it. Or you can pull the moisture out of your brush, dab it on the tissue even. And you can put your brush on it and see what's happening. The ink is being pulled up obviously I'm making my hand a little bit dirty but you can actually take from it so you can make something lighter again now we might go for a few more splats and little sprays down here you might say but I've got watercolors at home can you use watercolor of course you can but there's something quite fun about this now if I look closely I can spy some drips into areas and he's working with this vertically. So obviously things are running down. Now we're not, but we're going to try it. So we want to create some little drips. I'm gonna feed those drips. I'm turning the work away from me, more so you can follow what I'm doing. And I'm going to put a little bit of water on it. And I'm going to, do you see what I'm doing? Creating like the start of a drip. And then I'm gonna feed that drip with water. See, I'm putting more water on the top. And then I could give it a little tap. One drip's kind of bunched together, made a quite a large drip, and the other one has remained like a little teeny drip. So I can, using that very wet area, create more little drips and let them quite genuinely run down. If it runs beyond the actual image, I think that's fine, that's cool. Paint some drips in, but the painted drip looks a bit contrived, it doesn't look quite right. Now the next thing we're going to do is just let this dry. I don't want to keep working on it for now. I think it'd be better to dry before we try some more drawing materials on top of it. So I confess I've been to put a hairdryer on this just to speed it up because I'm impatient. Now you could still draw back into it, adding structure back in, keeping that vertical horizontal line type thing going on if you would like to. Now, if the lines look too obvious, remember you can wet them again and you can blend them in a little bit more. But you might want to move on to some other materials. Here I have some pencil crayon and you can draw back into it with the pencil crayon. Obviously, I've got this white one, which has got the ability to put like highlights in. If you looked at the structure of the building of St Paul's Cathedral, you might see architectural features that you want to add in and define a little bit more. In Virtue sketchbooks, we do see sort of more detail into the original sketches and drawings that he does when he's on site. Like I've used a fine liner to get him to do the really small cross on the top. Now it doesn't have to be St Paul's in London, it could be a different location. So once you do your drawing from artists, you might start to develop your own choice of imagery. Remember that the purpose of doing any of this is to get us more confident as we explore and experiment and get some purpose into it. I'm sort of scribbling onto there. I quite like the textures that are into this area. There isn't a big drip along there, but using my version, I'm going to work into it. So you can try lots and lots of different things. You can use the side of the pencil to create more of a haze. You see what I'm doing? I've got the pencil and I've got it almost flat against the paper. 
pop it on here and lift it up so you can see. I'll put it almost flat and I'm doing a very hazy large mark rather than a kind of tip mark which is made from a very small surface area. Get the splatty sprays back onto it. Now, you might have some white paint you want to try and put onto it. Remember, this is an artist response, so just give it a go. If you want to take some risk, you might do it on a scrap of paper there you're working. So, if I quickly just do a section, I tend to do it as a little block or a rectangle. And I've got my paintbrush. You can see what I've done. I've just created a test area and I want this to be wet. Put my brush down and I have a corrector pen. And if I put the corrector pen on it and draw on it, hopefully you can see what's beginning to ha where happen. Where it's very wet, you see it's beginning to run. Let's get a close up of that. Now, those marks are quite like the surface of a John Virtue. Remember, I'm just showing you one image so. With any of this, you might go back and look at the artist's work, do a Google. To Google them isn't probably the best way to see these works, but at the moment in lockdown, we're fairly restricted on what we can do. So I'm going to wet into the water on here because I want to try this technique. So you might try it and you might think, oh, I don't like that. But again, remember, it doesn't matter about everything working. This is about us learning about materials and trying things out. I don't like the liney edge, I like it where it's kind of wet, so I'm going to get my brush again. Now it might be that you have a corrector pen and it doesn't do this, it might not mix and sort of leach out in the water. So you might have to try something else, but remember just keep experimenting and enjoy a little bit of mixed media. So I've just continued for a couple more minutes with a little bit more of the corrector fluid and throwing back into it. One thing I recommend is between the point where you wet it, and then you work on it again, let it dry, like I used a hairdryer, but let it dry, even if it takes a few minutes, to go and have a cup of tea or something, do something different. When you come back to it, then you find it's much easier to put the materials on and control. If you put wet materials down and then you put a felt tip on top of it, the felt tip line will become quite faint. So explore and see where you get to.